creative people um, this is the first episode of studio time which is basically going to be just me in my studio sharing a few techniques and some art journal pages I'm doing and hopefully um, just providing general inspiration for you guys out there so don't expect anything too fancy this is going to be a relaxing time between the two of us and um, you know, I'm not going to do my hair all perfect and put on makeup. This is just relaxed, chill time. And you might even see this little guy every now and then who seems to walk around all the time and bark in the background of my videos. But just so you know what it looks like and who's to blame, this is the guy. This is Poppy. He's lovely, but he's naughty as well. So without further ado, let's start um, our first episode together. I just wanted to basically um, do a first original page with you and show you the process that I'm going through while I'm doing it. And I was just watching a, a video um, by Diane Reevely showing her new range of dilution paints um, which have fantastic colours um, that you can also find in similar brands. But um, she loves layering her paints which dry really fast. Um, mine don't dry that fast so I just use a hairdryer like most mixing media um, artists so but um, the whole point of it was just to layer and create backgrounds quite easily so that you can use them later on in your journal um, as uh, a starting point basically and you can do a lot of those pages in one go a lot of those backgrounds in one go that way you always have something to write on or to embellish further or to play with a little bit later on. So um, I will show you a few techniques that I've learned just um, watching her and also a few things that I like to do in my own journal pages in my uh, own paintings as well. And I hope you'll find them useful and um, you know I'll just talk through them at the same time and try to explain what I'm doing so you can reproduce that um, on your side. So without further ado, I'll just um, stop this video and um, put the camera down so you can see my pages and let's get started. All right, so I'm all set up now. So I hope you can see the journal pages quite well. And um, so one of the techniques uh, Diane Reevely was talking about was to create a background uh, with acrylic paints using a baby white to spread the colors around. Um, as I mentioned before, she was using her own paints, um, but I'm sure this is going to work just with any paint. So I'm going to use what I've got on hand because I haven't got her paints. And I'm going to use uh, these three colors. So like a sort of almost a red, sort of dark magenta, an orange and a lighter pink. But obviously just use whichever colors you like and whichever brand of paint you already have. Now you'll need some baby wipes. Actually, just one will probably suffice. I'm going to them out. I'm just going to put a little bit of paint on my palette. And I use disposable palettes because I don't have to clean them up afterwards. I don't think anyone likes to clean, especially not art supplies mess. I haven't even started, I'm already covered in paint. That's the whole point of it, isn't it? Just paint all over your fingers. Now I've got you my colours here. I'm going to put that up here. You probably can't see the palette, but that's all right. You'll know what I'm doing. Um, this is an old, uh, an old paint I was using as just um, you know, just to cover up leftover paint, so it's not very pretty, but I'll start on one of these. Now this page is in gesso at first, but that's all right. We'll see how it goes without the gesso. So I'm just gonna put the baby wipe on my finger, like so, and just um, dip it in a little bit of paint, with the excess on the side, and just start rubbing it in.
Um, I'm going to do another um, layer of color on here using so basically I'm going to use mostly the same colors I've used and roughly um, on the same areas just to intensify some of those areas. Okay, colors, all the paint is dry. The colors are beautiful and vibrant, very fiery. Reminds me of a hot summer night with all those pinks and oranges, like a sunset, you know? And I'm um, just wondering what I'm going to do next. I think I'm going to add um, a little bit of texture just using my fingers as a tool. And I'm thinking, um, maybe something a little bit contrasting, so something like a turquoise, you know I me, mean? I love turquoise, I could just use it everywhere. And I'm um, going to use some of this lighter turquoise. It's a little bit transparent, so it's not going to be completely opaque, but um, I'm just going to rub it in with my fingers to add a little bit of color contrast. These colors just look fantastic together. Wow. Love this. You see, this is when you find, you know, you just end up doing cool stuff or something that you think you is cool, obviously. You may not think so. But uh, I do love this color combination and I wouldn't have thought of um, putting them all together if I had put some thought into it. But because I just went along with it and said, oh, okay, how about this? How about this blue to go with those and yeah, it works really well. So kind of a happy mistake, but I think that only happen when you're not actually thinking too much. A little bit here, a little bit there, just to unify the pages together. And let's see. Could add maybe some green. Hmm. Let's try that. I'm gonna do some little dots with my finger. I'm trying just to flatten the paint a little bit so I don't get too much thickness. You can also rub it in a little bit. So I don't know if you can tell, but um, these colors are a little transparent, not completely opaque, which is a good thing in this case because it allows me to see the colors underneath still. So if I apply it quite thinly, then you'll still see the colors quite vibrant underneath. And of course, if I put it on quite thick, then it becomes a lot more opaque. I'm going to dry this off just so I don't you know, mix my colors too much and create mud and I'll be back. All right, so far this is what we've got. I love it already. <laughs> uh, but of course we're not done yet. So 
I'm thinking of adding maybe um, some little dots in red just to get a little bit of contrast but still get something that a color that will go with the rest of the existing colors so let me pull out a stencil so I've got one that has a lot of um, tiny dots I think that's what it's called maybe tiny dots I can't remember exactly who made it uh, I think it's on there um, I think it's the crafters workshop so if you wanted to buy um, this exact stencil look for the crafters workshop stencil and the number is 361 so TCW 361 and you should be able to find it now let's put some red I'm going to use I'm going to use this brand the uh, Joe Sonia's um, colors because the paint is quite thick and you know a bit more sort of heavy bodied and that'll be easier to spread that through the stencil without adding any modeling paste or mediums to make it thicker and I'm just going to use a palette knife actually no I'm going to use a little makeup sponge um, just a regular makeup sponge you can find in the craft or well, sometimes the craft stores but even better in the Tudor stores you know those really cheap ones and it works just fine don't make don't forget to wash them when you finished I actually forgot to wash this off um, because otherwise they do harden up and then they get a little bit useless so um, but the fact that they're made of this dense sort of spongy foamy stuff is really cool to do stencils like I'm about to do so I'm just going to dip this sponge a little bit here in the paint remove the excess on the side, so I only have a little bit here. You can always add more later. And I'm just going to press my stencil firmly down and just tap it over the stencil. You can probably rub it in a little bit as well. Just be careful not to move the stencil too much. If you want to play it safe, just dab it. If you're adventurous like me, <laughs> then you can rub it in a little bit, but hold it tight. So I'm trying to get some of the red to show through quite a bit and some of the red to also fade out for a little bit more of a subtle effect. You'll see what I mean when I pull it off. I'm just using the rest of my paint so I've got no waste. Right, let's see. Okay, hopefully that gives you an idea of what I'm talking about. You can see some of these sections a little bit darker and it sort of fades out here. Give you a bit more of a subtle effect. Now you can use your baby wipe to clean up your stencil. Okay, so while I paused, I just uh, cleaned up my stencil and sponge and uh, running water just to make sure that it's all come off and I don't have to worry about putting paint everywhere and I can store it again safely. Now, um, I'm thinking, you know, I like those dots and I think I might continue a little bit with that dot and circle theme. Um, but this time, slightly bigger ones and I think I'm going to use some white. Um, I don't have a soft stencil with large dots available, so I'm going to use uh, what I've got here, which is um, actually a, a hard sort of plastic one, and I'm sure it'll work just fine. I'm not looking for perfection. And I've got all the different sizes of dots in here, so that actually works even better. I'm going to grab some white paint and do the same I did with the red, just a little blob 
and I'm going to dip my little makeup sponge here a little bit in the paint and remove the excess on the side and let's see I'm going to just add, use this sort of medium size here one and see how we go with that should give us some softly some soft edges dots Yeah, it's pretty cool. I like that. So while I was out there in my kitchen cleaning up my stencil, I decided to go for a healthy snack and ended up eating a massive ice cream. Can anyone please explain to me what goes on with this brain of mine? Um, just try, <laughs> really trying to be healthy and it's not quite working. I have no willpower when it comes to sweet food. Terrible, terrible. Anywho, so, all this is dry at least in the meantime and while I was eating my lovely ice cream, which I will regret um, starting from five minutes ago, um, I thought I would do uh, use another stencil, this one, uh, which is also from the Crafters Workshop and this one is number 3515, I think. Uh, yeah, I think I'll go with that. 3515 or 351S, it's a bit hard to see on here. Um, and I'm going to use some black just to make it really pop and contrast. But before I do that, I thought I would add a little bit more color um, to highlight some of these circles. Just using some liquid acrylic which looks like this if you've never used it. This one is from Daily Rowney and it's a pearlescent uh, dark grey colour. Um, it looks a little bit like ink almost. I haven't got that many colours yet but I do love them. I also have a silver. It looks like this. I have the camera can pick it up a little bit better. At least the label isn't covered in stuff on this one. And uh, like ink, it does come with a little um, piping tube or eyedropper, I should call it. I'm going to use a little plastic cup that I used just for that to put it a little bit in there. Just a few drops, I don't need much for now. I can always put it back later. And I'm going to use a thin paintbrush. Something like this. I don't know if the camera is going to pick it up. Anyway, you get the idea. Dip it in water just to get the bristles um, a bit wet and back in shape. Wipe that off on a cloth just to straighten up all those bristles. And a little bit of this acrylic paint. Bit more than that. I was a little bit stingy here <laughs> and it just feels like ink almost you know it's so liquid so I, if I call it ink I'm sorry you'll know what I'm talking about ink would work just fine by the way uh, just create some very thin kind of circles around actually I'm going to use a thinner paintbrush I don't know if you'll be able to see this one because it's quite small. Same thing, bit of water, wipe it off. It's right in there. And just, 
you know, loose sort of scribbles. On some of them, I'm not going to do all of them. Back to that in order. I'm going to use my baby wipe just to clean off the inside of the cup. Ready for next time. And this is the other one. So because I put this acrylic ink or acrylic liquid acrylic, sorry on fairly thinly it does dry reasonably fast so that's quite good we like things that dry fast as artists don't have time to waste now um so i was thinking of putting this stencil over it with some black as i was saying earlier and i was just wondering while i was drying if i should put some other color underneath just to make it pop even more if that's going to be a bit too much I think I'm just going to go straight with the black and see what happens. Um, so again, I'm going to use my little sponge thing here and use some black paint. You can use something else if you want, as long as it's a, a dark color, I think it'd be fine. Just want a little contrast. <clears throat> And let's do the one here and see how it goes. I'm going to do the whole thing perfectly. I do you want it to sort of fade out a little bit? I'm just going to check. Yeah, that's good like that. So like I was doing earlier, I'm just going to do some areas a bit more dark and some a little bit lighter fading out. Just for extra interest. And I'm using more of a pouncing action this time. Without going in all the little openings on purpose. I'm going to continue doing them vertically, I think. Yeah. I'm going to do another one sort of here. I don't want it too symmetrical. And then another one sort of almost going off the page. Almost, but not quite. And again, leaving some bits and pieces a little bit patchy on purpose. So once again, I'm going to dry off my stencil. Actually, I'm going to do another one here too, a little bit lower. I think it'll feel a bit more balanced, you know, what it's like with the uneven numbers. Three and five always work better than two and four. It's just the way it is. I'm trying to understand why. It's all good. So I'm going to dry this off and clean it up. I'll be right back. Okay, so while I was looking at my page, uh, wondering what else I could do, I just noticed this uh, bowl cap on my desk. Which I thought, well, I could use that to make some circles, more circles. So I'm just going to um, dip it in the paint. I still have some white here on my palette, so I'm just going to dip it and turn it a little bit here in the paint just so I get some paint on all the edges and then press it down until I run out. 
actually this bottle cap works really well because the edges are quite thin so I really like the effect here. And again, I'm just going to do some coming from across the edge of the pages. Just make it a little bit more natural looking, I guess. And it's really hard to stop. I just feel like I want to just go nuts and put them all everywhere. But let's stop. I think that's enough. Maybe one more. Here. Yeah. Maybe one more, all right. Last one, I promise. There. Okay, I'll stop. That works well. It's subtle, but it's contrasting at the same time. So I think I'm gonna keep this bottle cap that just happened to be right on here. It's waiting for me to find it. Now let's dry this off. It's pretty much dry. I'll show you up close what we've got so far so you can see those uh, thin circles here, really like it, really really like that. So we've got lots of colors and quite a bit of texture going on in this background so far. So there's a few things we can do um, coming from here depending on what you want your finished page to look like. I still don't really know so I'm going to keep um, adding some colors I think maybe little patches of colors and uh, I think I'm going to keep reuse one of the colors we already have on here so it's still kind of unified um, and I'm going to use the darker pink I think let me find it again uh, where is it okay that's the one I think if not, doesn't matter, it'll still work. I'm just gonna add it on my finger, just a tiny blob, and sort of uh, rub it in in some of the areas, going around some of these circles without um, covering them completely. So, again, transparent colors here, transparent paint, so I can still see what I've got underneath. If you go over a circle, well, who cares? No big deal. It does intensify some of these colors underneath though. Especially if you actually put some paint on your finger, not like I just did, where there was hardly anything. And don't worry too much if you've got some colors covered that you wanted to keep, we can always add another layer later on.
metallics in iridescent paint, um, which I absolutely love. I can't stop putting everywhere. Thankfully, and that's obviously not a coincidence, I have similar color, um, similar colors to these, which are my favorite colors. I was trying to use something different, but it didn't quite work out. They are back. My favorite colors being the magenta, um, the lime green, the turquoise, and the purple. All there. I didn't even, you know, do anything or do it on purpose. Did it on purpose. Sorry, I can't speak English today. <laughs> but anyway, um, back to metallics and iridescent. This one is an iridescent green yellow by Pebeo Studio Acrylics. And I'm going to put a little bit on my finger here and apply it where those greens already are. So that will highlight them. If I put this uh, over another color, obviously it'll change a little bit because they are translucent too. I'm going to stick to mostly those areas. And as always, I'll probably end up, end up putting this iridescent stuff all over the place. It's really addictive. Even though I think I'm just going to do a few strokes, not too much, you know, keep it subtle. And then it's all over. That's a bit too much here, so I'm going to wipe it off. And I've got also a turquoise in the same series. I promise I'll try not to use too much of this for a change. <laughs> yes, she says. So pretty though. Now I'm looking at my page on this, you know, from the sides as well, so I can sort of see where I've put it. And you can maybe see the shine a little bit. If not, I'll show you very shortly. And I'm going to put also. So I've got a pink one and more of a red one, which I haven't used very much. This one is called, this one here is the iridescent red blue. So it's got a bit of bluish reflection to it, which is quite interesting. Whereas this one is an iridescent violet blue. So again, a bit of a bluish um, tinge to it, which is fine because we've got blues and purples in here. So both will work. Let's try this one. subtle because I'm putting red on red which is what I want or oh, this is almost like a more of a dark pink actually more of a magenta color if you're hearing a, a little bell sound in the background that's my doggy I know he's not a cat but um, it was Easter recently and um, I got a, a chocolate Easter bunny, you know those Lynn chocolate bunnies and they have a little bell around their neck on the packaging and I for fun decided to put it on um, his neck and I haven't removed it since. That was, what, when was Easter? It's now early May, so <laughs> a month ago. I've, I've decided it actually um, is quite helpful for me to know where he is because he runs around the house all the time and sometimes I don't know if he's answering uh, my calls for him to come back so if I hear the jingling of the bell I know where he is and if he's actually um, listening to me or not quite often he doesn't so go figure so I'm gonna put a bit more in here looking quite lovely. I think I'm going to be finished pretty soon. Yeah, I don't think I'm happy with where we landed here. I'm just going to step back a little bit and show you what I've got up close. So this is looking from the front. So you can't really see the metallics, of course, until you sort of tilt the pages a little bit and 
see the reflection of the light on it. I'll come closer. I'll try to get the camera to focus on that. There you go. Look, you see this shine here? The reds and it's really nice. I could have put more, of course. I didn't cover the entire pages, but I'll try to be good this time. So you see it's subtle because I used the same color of metallic on top of the matte color underneath. So I get a subtle effect without mixing too many colors and get, getting everything looking all messed up. And I'm really happy with this. But wait, there's more! Okay, I've decided to add um, some doodling using a white pen. This is, uh, let me double check so I give you the right info. It's a hybrid gel, Grip DX, and it's white, and it is by the brand Hybrid. There you go. So I decided to um, add a few flowers, which I love doing in a lot of my work, and the flowers here. I have some other ones I was doing not long ago. Where are they? Um, like that. I love, you know, that sort of whimsical style. So I decided to add some on those circles using the, the these circles as the center of the flower, so to speak. So I'm just going to go around and do a few petals. And because I'm using white, I did dry my background first. It is um, still quite subtle, but it will go well with the white that's already on there without distracting too much. And the middle of the book is always a bit of a challenge. And I'm just going to do some extra doodles as well. Whatever comes to mind really. You see, you think it's over, and then I don't know what happens. I go, oh no, hang on, I have another idea. So maybe that's because I was doodling last night in front of the TV. And you know, some of these doodles haven't left my brain overnight, clearly. Um, and another one here. It would equally work well with the black pen and maybe I'll do some of it with a black pen using a very fine tip 0 0.7 it's a sharpie pen in black and you know I can create extra detail but again still subtle and it's okay because we've got some black on here already so I could do some subtle petals on here. Maybe one here. Hmm. 
I'm still fairly whimsical and freehand. I do like the sort of loose style, so it doesn't feel too, you know, forced basically. And that's something I've um, been teaching myself to do, just to let go and not be so, um, you know, perfectionist and try to make things look perfect all the time, which is a very difficult things to not do when you're used to it. So I think I'm good for now. Uh, I'll leave the camera on my desk here in case something else comes to mind. Otherwise, that's it for now.